Okay, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the next episode of Learn to Pump with Isaac Parks. We are out here today going to be talking about your swing. What this guy's doing on my left nipple, okay? He is swinging to kick a football. <laughs> anyway, we are gonna be talking about the swing, okay? So, let's begin. What is the goal of the swing? What's the point of the swing? Why do we swing our leg? First of all, you'd have a hard time kicking a football without swinging your leg. The leg swing is essentially the punt, right? Like, that's how you can have a one-step, two-step, no-step punt, okay? No-step being like this. So, you know, get a little no-step going here. Notice how I will not take a step. And then you just hit a little one of these and kick it. And that was not very good. I digress. Anyway, so one step, two step, no step, all of them have one thing in common, the swing. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about the swing. We're gonna be mostly going over like what the goal of the swing is, what are like the basics, how do we get power from our swing, and then just the basics of the swing, all this little points and pointers I can give you as we talk about the basics, because like drop, like what is punting, and like some of our next couple episodes, we're gonna be talking about just the basics, okay? So these aren't gonna get as in depth. Some of the uh, older guys might be chomping at the bit for me to give away every little nitty gritty tiny detail. And I'm already giving a lot of information in these videos if you're a new punter. So you older guys are just gonna have to wait until I get to the advanced parts of the swing and really get into the stuff because I don't want to overload beginners with information, right? It's just, it's gonna do nobody any good. Okay, so then let's get into it. Okay, first thing. What is the goal of the swing? Why do we swing our leg? What are we trying to accomplish when we swing? Okay, so the thing that we're trying to accomplish here with our swing is we're trying to transfer all of the momentum and all of the force that we have built up through our steps and through weightlifting and literally all the force we have in our body through the football. Now let's make an emphasis here, okay? The most important, what am I trying to say? The most efficient transfer of power is going to be in a straight line. That's how you're going to transfer the most amount of power through the ball, okay? So when we're swinging, you know you're making a mistake if your swing looks like this, okay? Because that means we're not transferring all of our power downfield. Assuming we're aiming this way, okay? Which is the assumption here. We're trying to kick the ball this way. If our swing looks like this, we're not gonna be transferring the most power that way that we can to get the ball in the direction we want it to go. Same thing if our first swing looks like this. If we're trying to kick it this way, that is not what we wanna do. That's not the most efficient way, okay? And to kind of demonstrate this, we're gonna talk about where does our power come from in our swing. Understanding this concept is going to help you coach yourself, help you figure out what you're doing wrong, why you're losing power, all that stuff, okay? so. Power in the swing comes from three parts. First, it comes from momentum, right? So force equals mass times acceleration. So building up acceleration through our steps, it's going to start giving us momentum that we can put through the ball, right? I weigh like 195, okay? So if I'm building up speed, my mass is going to contribute in the power that I'm putting into that ball to shoot it downfield. Yeah, so the more momentum we build up, the more power is going to already be going into that ball before we ever kick it. Let's give you a little example here, okay? All I'm gonna do is just run, kind of like run at this ball, and then just let my leg just do this, and we're gonna see if it goes, okay? I'm not even gonna try to kick it very hard, okay? So here we go, here. Running at the ball, making good contact. That is a 45 yard punt. 45 yard punt using nothing more than momentum just because I'm like running at the football and just letting the momentum of my body shoot through my leg, carrying the ball downfield. The next part, because it all has to do with building up momentum in our leg, because we're trying to get this spot on our foot. Let's get the camera at it. We're trying to get this spot on the foot through this spot in the ball. So, and we're trying to do it as fast as we can to build momentum to give it a spiral. The way that we do that, or the second way, aside from just our steps building momentum, is through our hip action, okay? This movement right here is very powerful for building up momentum. Your glute is one of the biggest muscles on your body. You wanna use that as much as you can when it comes to punting. So you wanna be able to go from sort of a tilted hip here to push through, creating a lot of momentum, okay? 
So notice how my hip is back right before I kick to right here. It's naturally gonna bring that knee forward, okay? <clears throat> so that's a lot of power being generated by your hips. One way you know that you're not utilizing your hips all the way is when you're, if you're going to punt and you see your leg coming up and your hips are still back and they're not in this forward position with a slight pelvic tilt up, okay? This is a big problem that I have as a punter is when I go to punt, you can see me coming through just like this with my hips back behind me. Another indicator could be that your left knee is still bent at contact, like right before you make contact. Because if your left knee, left knee straightens out, or at least it's close to being straight, it is literally going to push that hip up, okay? Just for instance, just watch. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so that's a good indicator right there. Left knee's bent, hips are back. That's how you know you're not utilizing it. You can see that in like the no step, where the whole premise of the no step is you start with your hips back, like so, you lean back and then you drive your hips forward to get the ball downfield. Here's an example. Hopefully I can not mess this one up, okay? Hips are back, drive the hips downfield. Now notice this generates a lot less power than your steps, which is why I've been able to get away with having bad hips for my whole career because even though it is a very important part, if you can get two out of three, you can still generate a lot of power, but momentum is by far the most power because it's controlling the most amount of mass. Your momentum through your steps is controlling your entire body weight of mass. Okay, so that shows how important the hip action is to creating it. So let's create some notes and some checks when we're thinking about hip action. I already told you, you don't wanna see your hips back. Now, how far forward should we wanna get our hips? A good mental aiming point, right, is if we pretend that standing straight, there was a board coming from our hips, right? that we can tilt up and tilt down. Ideally, at the point of contact, we want that board to be like at a 45 degree angle from our body. The ideal launch path for the football, for it to create the maximum hang time and distance, okay? So we wanna think about getting to a 45 degree angle. Here, I'll step back. We're gonna think about getting to a 45 degree angle and letting our leg come up like that, okay? Up and through at a 45 degree angle is gonna create the most optimal flight path for the ball. Finally, the last place that we are going to get our power from when it comes to our swing is our leg lock, quad extension. I've heard a lot of it. I've heard a lot of different names for this, okay? So our leg lock, quad extension, whatever you wanna call it, is the last point of power. And that is essentially this little number right here. The extension is this, okay? It is the last little area that we can get power from because if you think about it we are like creating a whip so we run forward and then we shoot our hips and then extend the quad so whoops you know creating like a whip that's going to generate a ton of power and at each little interval of the whip we're moving less weight but adding a little bit more power every time so the quad extension is the last little piece of this puzzle okay because honestly if i just do this really fast my leg is gonna extend naturally on its own just because of how much momentum this creates i'm not even trying to extend so then when i'm here and viciously extending my quad to a point of contact it is going to launch that football down the field so now you might think how do we want to extend our quad so for me i think about extending my quad at about knee height okay so the height that my knee is normally at is about where I want to extend my quad to. That creates sort of like this ideal plane of launching the football. Because any higher and it's going like straight up, any lower and you're driving it, but right at knee height, it's creating a very good launch path for this ball. That's just gonna take off at a nice angle. So what's very important about our leg lock is that we want to be making contact with the ball directly at leg lock. So what that means is we don't wanna make contact with the ball with our knees still slightly bent. We don't wanna make contact with the ball after our leg is already locked. Imagine it like boxing, okay? I don't know if any of you guys have ever boxed, but what they always tell you is that the most power from your punch comes when that arm is fully extended, not after extension, and definitely not like right there. It's the same thing for punting. The maximum of power we can get is when our leg is fully locked out 
not after because we lose a lot of power <laughs> and not before because we also lose power so what you're trying to do when you make contact with your swing is drop the ball and connect right like the moment your foot touches the ball is the exact same moment your quad is fully extending maximizing the power that comes out of that and then another little detail that you should think about when you're locking your leg out is you want this foot tilted up just a little bit exposing this part of your foot here I'll look down this way you want it to expose this part of your foot okay when you're fully extended that is the ideal striking spot for your foot it's the hardest part on your foot it also exposes a specific part of your quad that is a very explosive for the final little details as we're talking about like uh, as we're talking about our swing coming through the basics and stuff like that so a big thing for your swing is that it should be very streamlined okay one mistake I see a lot of beginners make is as they're going for more power they bring their leg out like this and come back around and in a lot of ways that can generate power I see it with a lot of field goal kickers because you're used to leaving this hip back before you kick a field goal and come through like this so that works with your swing path for field goal kicking right because your foot's coming through at an angle allowing you to come up and you're making contact at the bottom of the swing like so with punting it's a little different because our contact point is out further from our body near the end of the swing so what that means is that you want your swing to be a little bit more streamlined this way okay because we're trying to throw all of our momentum downfield and we're making contact with something that's out here and not something that's right here what allows kickers to have this sort of swing is that it's all around this rotation of the body okay punting does not allow for that sort of rotation okay everything really has to be streamlined and downfield and the importance of this streamline is that it allows you to get the most consistency out of your punt for instance okay so this is going to allow us to get the most out of our punting okay because if i'm here and wrapping around and kicking even if i can hit the sweet spot of the ball and turn it over it's not getting the most optimal power which means i want to be really like right here okay just very tight to my body kicking straight up and through putting the ball directly downfield where I'm aiming it. <laughs> this ability to streamline the punt is why punters can get so much power off of so few steps because it's sort of creating like a spring trap that just unloads and punches the ball downfield with their momentum, like so. So, those are the basics of the swing. Thank you guys for coming out today. As always, I hope you're having an amazing one. I hope you learned a little something about the swing and where we generate power from. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you're enjoying this series so far, now would be my plug. Time to remind you guys, please give it a like. Well, and subscribe to the channel. Every little detail helps get the word out there. Spread the love of punting to everybody. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Let's end with a dinger, huh? Can I get this one 5-0 on the last pun of the day? We'll see. Here we go. Probably not 5-0, not gonna lie to you. Anyway, have a good time guys, peace. Okay, no head cam, this is for the outro of the uh, how to swing video, so let's see it. Last ball of the day, let's go.